Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Sonic and Mangle. NBA All-Star Weekend is upon us with the league's brightest stars coming out to shine in the Windy City. We're going to preview every contest. Rising stars, skills, three-point, dunk, and the All-Star Game on Sunday night. On Friday night, the big names are out to play. Zion, Ja, Luca, Trey. But Grant, what under the radar name are you looking for to have a big night in the Rising Stars game? For Team USA, I'm looking at undrafted rookie Kendrick Nunn. He's having a phenomenal season down in Miami and a very under the radar, I would say. Not a lot of people know about him. Tyler Hero is kind of the name you hear out of Miami. And I mean, they're up there, fourth in the East right now. He's having a great season, 15 points per game, 99 made threes on the year. I mean, four, uh, way back in the preseason, a 40 bomb. Which that's what got him, my attention. Helped him got on the team. Yeah. yeah that's what yeah. got him on the team. So, in a contest like the Rising Stars Challenge, where it's about threes and dunks, a guy like him that can light it up from the outside is going to be key. And I think he is a rising star, and a lot of people that don't know his name are going to learn a lot about him on Friday night. What about you? I am looking at Brandon Clark of the Memphis Grizzlies. He... He caught an eye in college because of how great he was on the offensive and defensive end, and he wasn't supposed to be their main option going into the tournament, and then he became the guy. And without him, Memphis isn't as far as they are because, yeah, John Morant's amazing in a different category than most rookies. Brandon Clark's 12-6, and 62% from the field, and, like, he does shoot the ball. And last night he had 27 points. The sky's the limit for him. He fills it up against Zaga. He's a big reason why Memphis is good. Look, look for him to have a big night. Yeah, I could definitely see him uh, having some success out there. For sure. We'll move into NBA All-Star Saturday night. An electric atmosphere, as always, and it kicks off with the Taco Bell Skills Challenge. There's a mix of uh, guards and forwards here this year, and it requires some great passing, dribbling, and shooting. Last year's winner, Jason Tatum, in the contest again. Does he repeat? Sad to say no. I am going to ro roll with Big Blue Nation Shy Gilgis Alexander. The guy's been a star this year, leading his team to relevance with Chris Paul and that surrounding cast. He's so quick. He's so lethal. I think it's SGA's turn. I think it's going to come down to him and Spencer Dinwiddie. I think Spencer Dinwiddie also could win it, and he's had success in the past. But I, I just got shy. What about you? What are you thinking? Uh, yeah, you mentioned my guy, Spencer Dinwiddie. Uh, I think Dinwiddie previously won this event in 2018 didn't get the invite back this year. He, he was a little salty there. He spoke to the media about it. He was not too pleased, but after an injury, he snuck into the field, and I think he's going to go out there with something to prove. A lot of guys just go out there, kind of have fun, take it easy. I think he's going to go hard. As a previous winner, he knows what it takes to get it done. Did what he's my guy to win this thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he could start on most teams, and the fact that he has Kyrie Irving in front of him is good and bad, but Spencer Dinwiddie is... Is quite a star and quite good with the ball, so it should be very interesting. Yeah. Next up is the event with many heavyweights, the Mountain Dew three-point contest with with reigning champion Joe Harris and All-Stars Trey Young, and now Devin Booker after Damian Lillard dropped out of the three-point contest and All-Star game. We got some fresh faces across the board, Duncan Robinson, Davis Bertans. Grant, who do you got? You got the All-Stars, you got the field. Give me the All-Stars in this one, but more specifically Trey Young. The dude shoots 37% on high volume threes, like nice tough shots off the dribble. He has 173 made threes this year already. That's a lot right there. And when he's hot, there's no one like him in the game. He can get it going from about anywhere on the court outside the three point line. And then the key for him, I think, is those new additional threes that are a little bit behind the arc. He shoots those in games like it's nothing. So I think with those, that'll definitely give him the upper hand. And if I had to go with uh, a little bit of a dark horse or just my next pick, I would take Zach Levine, actually. I know, as a Bulls fan, that seems a little easy, but, <laughs> Hello, yeah. but in Chicago, dude's made 168 threes on 39% uh, shooting, Not and bad I, at all. he's going to want to put on a show for the fans. Absolutely. Fans. Especially, like, he, he'll, he'll use that snub from the All-Star game. He'll use it as a hammer, because oh, yeah. those guys do. I, I'm going to take the field. I'm going to take Duncan Robinson, Miami Heat. I He's kind of sprung on the scene, uh, shoots 44% from three, and he doesn't, like, shoot two a game. That's, like, that's quite insane. He had that, that 10 for 14 performance out of nowhere that yeah. caught that caught my attention. And the Heat are like have used to been doing this. They got Daquan Cook years ago. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with nostalgia. Daquan Cook, Jason Capono, James Jones, the guy that carried LeBron to titles. Some names right there. So yeah, I think I think Dave, Duncan Robinson has a great shot to win this thing. And if not him, Davis Bertans has been lighted up for years in a row now. I've got got the nod this year. And I know the Wizards don't have much to be happy about this year. He's one of the bright spots for sure. Yeah. 
And then closing it out on Saturday night is my personal favorite, the AT&T Slam Dunk Contest. We got newcomer Pat Connaughton looking to make his name alongside some second place finishers in Derek Jones Jr. and Aaron Gordon. And the old champion, Superman himself, Dwight Howard's back. Sandik, who's going to steal the show? Who has the best dunk of the night? I think it, as much as of a vengeance you can have in a dunk contest, Aaron Gordon's going to have that vengeance. Let's not forget, in 2016, he sat in the air and didn't win. How infuriating is that? Plus, he's going into the house that Levine rents from Jordan, and I think that's going to be a huge factor. I think he has the dunk of the night, and I think he wins the thing. I, I mean, the, the competition is pretty tough, but I think Aaron Gordon comes out above the rest. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's tough to go against a guy who was a part of one of, if not the best dunk contest in the history of the sport. I mean, the <laughs> other one you think of when Jordan was in it. Yeah, I mean, that's a classic. He's pretty good. But the Levine Gordon is very well up there with it. And I mean, there's a big debate over if he should have won that one, too. So, like, he went into 2017, tried to go back. He was on a little bit of a bum ankle. Tried to get a little too cute with it, I thought. Bringing in the drone and trying yeah, to Yeah, didn't love gonna, that. I think he's going to get back to the basics and just throw it down with showing that incredible vertical that he has. I agree, best dunk of the night, he takes it home. Yeah. Switching gears, baseball season is just around the corner. Spring training, Nick, the pitchers and catches are reporting, it's awesome. Rob Manfred, however, was making the headlines this week, trying to talk about changing the format of the MLB playoffs from five teams in each league to seven teams, adding two additional wild cards. Yeah, this would allow for the top seed in each league to get a first round bye. And then the second highest division winner would get to pick which of the four wild card teams they want to play, along with the third division winner picking the next wild card team that they want to play, leaving the remaining two wild card teams to play each other. But that's not all. You got a live television draft for who you want, and each of these is a three game series, not a one game series. So, what are your thoughts on this possible expansion? Oh my gosh, I have so many mixed emotions. Because on one hand, it, it takes a lot of the prestige away from making the playoffs in MLB. Only 10 of 30 teams make it. Like, that's that's a small percentage compared to the other sports. The NBA, over half the teams make it. So, I, I it takes a little bit of away from that. But I love the fact that a lot of teams will be playing meaningful September baseball. And the games that don't mean anything, which we have so much this of, of in this recent format, I think teams will be motivated to get as far as they can. It gives anyone a shot. Teams that get hot at the right times. So... I have mixed emotions. I, th I I could imagine them implementing it. They said, I think 2022 would be the first year they'd start this. What about you? What do you think? At first, I was very against it. You know, traditionalist baseball guy, I didn't love it. Yeah. But once I saw a graphic that showed what it would have looked like last year, you add in the Red Sox and the Indians and the AL and then the Mets and the Diamondbacks and the NL, those were playoff caliber teams. I think those series would have been very competitive. Uh, the competition level just doesn't drop off there, and I mean... That's what I'm saying. I'm all for more postseason baseball. Like, that's the best time of year, the most electric atmosphere out there. And I really like how it's going to three games instead of a one-game wild card because you play 162 games, and you can't just boil that down to one game. I, you give them a typical three-game series, take two, you're moving on. I love that. So that's, that's my take on it. That's the thing, like... During the season, you want to get two out of three, so why not make it a three-game series? You play teams in three, I mean, occasional, like, two yeah. here and there, and then occasional four. I don't see the point of, of keep, keeping it at one when the MLB season is structured around three-game series. Yeah, I also love the idea of picking your own opponent, because you pick the wrong team and they beat you, that's on you. And yeah, it's strategic, because you could want to get the best team out of the way right away, or you could want to save them, and teams won't know how to interpret it, so they can use it to chip on their shoulder. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. They have like a selection Sunday March Madness yeah. type vibe. It's yeah. quite remarkable if it goes true. But onto the other rule change, what are your thoughts on the three batter minimum that pitchers have now when they come into the game? I I also I'm divided on this because one at, at one juncture you have lefty specialists that have made their career like Jerry Blevins and Justin Wilson to name a few and there's thousands of others, but it kind of takes that away, and if you can't get righties out, your value is going to be diminished. And that's that's why I'm leading my next point. It forces guys to become more well rounded, and not you can't have splits of 190, 350 because you just you'll you'll get rocked because chances you have three lefties in a row are very slim. So I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this one. I, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to speed the game up. Uh, people want it to be a little quicker. I mean, three hour game. It's a, it's a long time, but that's what baseball is. It's what baseball has been. 
and I just don't see the purpose of it. Like, if a guy's out there and he doesn't have it after one or two batters, like, he doesn't have it. Then yeah. you're trying to make him get rocked, basically. And I guess it takes away from this, the, the strategy of it, like, putting, like, the guy for one to third, one to third, one to third. I mean, it labors through an inning, and yes, it, yes, it takes a long time, but, like, that's the strategy of it, and I love the phrase, play the percentages, and it, this kind of takes that away. Yeah, so. I agree. I really don't see how it would speed it up, maybe by two or four minutes, but that's not what they're looking for. They exactly. Want like they want more of a rapid around. change. Exactly. Yeah. But NFL free agency is on the horizon, and the quarterback carousel is just starting to turn, and it's led by some veteran names that we really haven't seen on the market before, including Philip Rivers and Tom Brady? Yeah, oh. that guy. Yeah, I mean, this has led to questions surrounding Rivers and Brady. What if they were to flip teams? You get Brady out on the West Coast in L.A. and Rivers <laughs> in Foxborough with Belichick. Which team would end up with a better record? I am not discounting number 12, Tom Brady, on the Chargers. You look at the Chargers' schedule. They had, they had 11 losses on the service. That's, like, pretty awful. Two out of the 11 losses were more than by seven points. Two. Oh, so many games that could have gone their way. Rivers, we threw games away all year. Rivers is a great, but he threw 20 picks this year to 23 touchdowns, and including that Bruins against KC in Mexico City where he had that bomb to Mike Williams and just threw his fourth pick of the night. I also think Brady needs to change his scenery. This year, the Patriots, we're going to call it what it is. Brady kind of does the most with the least, and this year he couldn't do that, and a tribute to him falling off a little bit, but they didn't have a ton around him. Keenan Allen, 1,200 yards this year. Austin Eckler, almost 1,000 yards catching, and the way Tom Brady plays with his running backs in the backfield, that's going to go up if he goes there. And I think Rivers is just a shell of his former self, and I don't think if Belichick forces him to do what he wants, that's you're not getting Philip Rivers. You're getting a watered-down version that doesn't slant. What do you think? I mean, speaking of a shell of his former self, let's talk about Brady putting up 13 points against the Titans and in his previous playoff game, yeah. putting up 13 in the Super Bowl against the Rams. Uh, Father Time's knocking at the door. I think Brady's hit, he's finally hit that elusive cliff that we've all heard. I don't I'm t- give me old man Rivers <laughs> in New England. I get it. That man sold through for over 4,500 yards this past year. And, I mean, I get what you say, Eckler with Brady, but Brady doesn't throw for those yards. He can't throw it further than five yards down the field half the time. I just don't I don't think adding the weapons at this point in his career is going to help him that much. And I, I put my trust in Bill Belichick, one of the greatest coaches of all time. I mean, he's a mastermind, and I have faith in him. I trust the Patriots' defense, and I trust that division to be weaker. So I think that the Patriots with Rivers would end up with a better record. I do agree what you're saying. I mean, if Brady was to go to the Chargers, you do get number 15 twice a year. I mean, that's not easy, and I think Rivers did put them in a position to win the second time, so I'm going to give him a little more credit on that. And I think those seven point or less losses, I, did he lose them some of those games? Yes, but he kept them in a lot of those yeah, games. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing when you have a gunslinger quarterback is – he, he's going to make it. You, you, you ride on him. Yep. He, he can throw the, the, the long bomb. You saw it with Brett Favre. And then I mean, make, to make a comparison, you could either get burned or you get, you get the long bomb. So take your pick. After all that, it is time to wrap it up with birthdays, anniversaries, and what to watch for. We'll start off with birthdays. Happy birthday to UConn alum Richard Rip Hamilton, who turns 42 on February 14th. Rip was a three-year Husky who is the second leading scorer of all time and helped lead UConn to their first ever national championship in 1999. He went on to have a great NBA career filled with all-star appearances and a championship. Happy birthday to Rip. And we'd also like to wish a happy birthday to Hall of Famer Jerome Bettis, the bus. Uh, We wish him one of the happiest of birthdays as he turns 48 on February 16th. Bettis was a six-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro, and one-time Super Bowl champion. He's also eighth all-time in rushing yards with over 13,000. Pepper to the bus. Happy anniversary to Wilt Chamberlain on this date in 1966. Wilt broke the all-time scoring record at the time was 20,884 points. He would add on to that with a cool and finish with a cool 31,419. Wilt was pretty good at basketball. Happy anniversary, Wilt. Happy anniversary to Bill Belichick. On this date in 1996, the Browns, yes, the Cleveland Browns gave him the old hepo after he got fired for going 36 and 44 at the helm. And then he would go to the Patriots, and they won a couple times. We know what happened there. The rest is history. We know what happened there. All right, so upcoming weekend, not a ton of sports, but give me something to watch for. What to watch for? It's not a ton of sports related. He's not in the three-point contest. He's not in the All-Star game. But he's on the mic Saturday night. Damian Lillard, a.k.a. Dame Dalla, will take center stage on Saturday night as he raps. Look for Victor Lodipo to get out there with him. Oh, of course. 
Also, upcoming this weekend, some more XFL action. Week two, week one, surprisingly, it went well. Yeah. I mean, you had some good on-field interviews after kickers are missing kicks. You got some receivers throwing up after they score a touchdown. Yeah, guys shotgun and beers in the locker yeah, room. I mean, I mean, hey. It was a great first Guys weekend. being guys, you know. Yeah, so this weekend you got the New York Guardians going to D.C., and the Tampa Bay Vipers going to Seattle on Saturday. And then on Sunday, you got the Renegades going to uh, Los Angeles and the St. Louis Battlehawks going to Houston to play the Roughnecks. Should be another exciting weekend. Let's just hope we get our King Landry Jones back. Landry Jones, Renegades, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. he's my CT, dude. Yeah, absolutely. But we're out of time for today. We'll see you next week right back here, same time, same place. And as always, folks, let's ride. <laughs>